Happy October and happy Halloween Horror Month, everyone. My name is Joe, and this is Different Take. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and remember to click the bell so you don't miss out on any new content. I keep on forgetting to hit that bell. Let me get that. There you go. Let me know down in the comments below what your go-to movie or movies are for this time of year. I'm really curious to see. If you have a whole list yourself, then hey, put it down there. The criteria for this list is just all over the place because it's my personal list. So some of these movies, they like feel like fall and they feel like Halloween and they have that mood and atmosphere. Some don't. Some movies are just staples, just iconic movies that I just, I feel like I have to watch around this time of year. Some of these movies are like ghost stories, paranormal, ghostly stories and tales, not too much creature features and sci-fi horror. I don't know, it's not really like a go-to must watch for this time of the year for me, but it doesn't mean that it can't be for you. But anyway, here is 31 movies that I like to watch in October leading up to Halloween. Is that the girl from the haunt? Something happened to your car? <gasps> I'm just gonna put it right out there. I have a love-hate relationship with this movie and the sequel as well, because the sequel is no better. It's got a cool Halloween fall vibe to it. I mean, it feels like you're following friends going around in these haunted attractions. You see the lines outside of the haunted attractions and it's like, oh, it takes you there. You're like, oh man, this is awesome. It had so much potential. This movie has such a good idea and I feel like they committed halfway and were like, yeah, and then they were like, hmm. Swung and missed. It's still fun to watch. Did I say it's fun to watch? It's still great to watch around this time of year. Trust me on that one. I'm not giving you a shit movie, but I kind of am giving you a shit movie. But it's worth getting through the shit movie because of the time of year. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. I'm not making any sense. All right, next one. I know what you're thinking. Scream's not a fall or Halloween movie. It's such an iconic movie now. It's almost like a staple. It is a staple. I mean, you got Ghostface, you have Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, and then David Arquette. The gun, man, the gun. I put it right there. He's not there. Wes Craven, though, every, this, this movie is like an homage to all the great horror movies of the past. I mean, you can't go wrong with Scream. Who doesn't like this movie, honestly? I mean, you got the werewolf story, it's kind of funny and it's kind of scary. And just one thing, stay off the Mars. <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm not usually a big fan of movies like this where the lead character is pretty much like helpless, even though she you know, fights back eventually towards the end. But I like my characters to be able to fight back and like when they do fight back, like she fights back, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about. But you get towards the end and there's something about that third act and that last scene that is just so unsettling and creepy that it's a must watch just for the chills that you get. I'm just getting just, ugh, just thinking about it. Ugh. Now, this movie doesn't really have a lot of mood and atmosphere because it's a found footage movie, but there sure is a lot of leaves, dead leaves. You're in the woods. It's got some creepiness to it. You feel cold at times watching it. And that final scene, uh, for this time of year, Blair Witch Project must watch. Not to mention that Blair Witch is a witch story. Witches, Halloween, simple, yeah. Paranormal Activity, another found footage movie. Yes, one of the two main characters are not likable whatsoever, but this movie still packs a punch when it comes to the scares and it's supernatural haunting. There's not a lot of mood and atmosphere because of the found footage thing yet, but it makes up for it with the scares. Now, whether you go with the original miniseries it with Tim Curry, or you go with It Chapter 1, and then you go to It Chapter 2, it doesn't matter. Clowns. 
clowns. <laughs> Tim Carey's performance in that original made-for-TV movie, there's something unsettling about it. <laughs> clowns. Clowns. Insidious is... It's, yeah, it gets a little, whew, a little out there when it comes to like the third act and the story, but it's got some legitimate scares in this movie. And it's got, surprisingly, a good amount of mood and atmosphere in it. It's, it's a legit, creepy, scary movie. And that one scene with the red face got right behind, whew, fuck that shit. My heart just, <laughs> Now, this movie isn't for everyone. It's a period piece. They talk in that old style English. This movie is a slow burn. It could feel too slow to some people, but you cannot deny that it feels like fall. Plus, it's a witch story. I mean, come on, but get that goat away from me. When that goat starts talking, I ugh. What's the like the taste of butter? I'm a grown ass adult. Don't talk to me like that. What's wrong with this? Weird. Out of my face, Philip. Out of my face. This movie creeps me out. There, it is just unsettling. And the music, you take this music out of some of these scenes, yeah, they're still creepy, but ugh, good lord. This, it just sets the tone. The tone of, the, of that music is just get it off. I don't want to watch, just, I just, I watch it. I just feel dirty. Like I need to bathe myself. I need to soap with water, get it. Pie Wacket was a pleasant surprise. It's a little bit of a slow burn, but once it picks up, whoo, in that third act, man, wow. This movie is another one that just feels like fall, another witch demon story or something or other. I think it's a demon story, but it's kind of a witch background because of the fact that Pie Wacket was, I don't know, you gotta watch it. But Pie Wacket, I really enjoyed. And that one part where the Pie Wacket thing is just crawling and it kind of flips it. <laughs> I loved this movie. It's funny, it's entertaining, it's really well shot, and it it's scary. There is some really good scares in this movie. I don't know, some people were disappointed with it. I don't know, I had no expectations when I saw it. I, I watched it, I just was like, this was really good, I like this. Anthology movies are always great around Halloween, especially one where you're legitimately going through ghost stories. I mean, come on. Speaking of ghost stories, the fog is just John Carpenter in his comfort zone, man. He is just, whew, he delivers. The score, just the visuals. If you haven't seen this movie, don't think that's like, oh, well, so there's just fog swallows people up. No, it's a ghost story. And it's just, it's very creepy. It's good. I'll just put it that way. To me, The Fog is really underrated, and it's one of John Carpenter's best films. This movie is just creepy. Flat out. There's no bones about it. It's just creepy. The character of the Babadook is just creepy, unsettling. It takes their time as far as like setting these scares up. And that kid has the right idea when he says, don't let it in, don't let it in. Yeah, don't. Mm -mm -mm. And then the performance at the end, the third act from the mom, actually the whole movie, but that third act, shoo, you kidding me? Whether it be Conjuring 1, Conjuring 2, the third one's coming out at some point. 
next year or whatever. But The Conjuring is just a good old fashioned, creepy, scary movie. Some really good scaresness. That clap with coming out behind the... Ooh. <laughs> Slow burn, scary as hell. Some of the visuals in this movie that you see is just some of the most frightening stuff and it really takes its time. And Ari Aster, the director, really just took his time as far as interweaving these things in the background. I mean, he did it with Midsommar too. Just, you can watch this movie and just find things all over the place when you're watching it. It's just a creepy, unsettling, scary movie. to go with the 2013 Evil Dead on this one. I know people are going to be like, blasphemy, bullshit, bullshit. I don't care bullshit. This one is good. Listen, I love the original Evil Dead. I love Evil Dead 2. I love Army of Darkness. Who knows? Maybe next year I'll go with the original Evil Dead. Maybe this year I'll change my mind and go with the original. You can't go wrong with either one. There was something about the 2013 Evil Dead. It just, it just took the intensity up a notch. It just was just wild. It was scary as hell. <laughs> Haunt is a good, scary movie. It takes place on around Halloween. It's, it has to deal with extreme scares. Fair warning, there are some scenes that are just a little gruesome, like, oy, ooh, oh, ah, oof. Mm. The scary rooms that they go through is really elaborate and intricate. It's the, the like the characters, they maybe some could have been better than others. But to be honest with you, Haunt is a very solid movie. <laughs> Jason's such an iconic character. I mean, Friday the 13th is just a staple, but I'm not going to go with your typical Friday the 13th movie. I'm going to go with the BAM film, Never Hike Alone. I'm going with it and I'm sticking to it. The tone is a little bit different in this movie. I really enjoyed this movie. It's available to watch for free on YouTube. I'll put the link right here. So call me crazy, but I'm going with Never Hike Alone. It's just that good. Kick him in the nose! Kick him in the nose! He just had a Do it, do it! Wolfman Squad Nars! The Monster Squad. <laughs> I love this movie. Who doesn't like, if you don't like this movie, I, I don't think you have a soul. This movie is outstanding. Yes, it's not scary. Eh, it could be scary for kids though, but it has such a good heart and you have all the classic universal monsters in this movie. It just, I mean, it screams Halloween. I mean, you always see the Frankenstein mess and the, the werewolf and the mummy and the Dracula and all that sort of stuff. You, always see them everywhere so to see them all in this movie and this the story the kids were so good and everything the relationship between the little girl and frankenstein god this movie is just it's a must watch at least for me i love the monster squad another anthology kind of movie uh just a bunch of it's like 10 different stories in this movie and it's a, a fair warning for this movie do not i repeat do not watch tales of halloween and take it seriously it's trying to have fun with these scary tales and whatnot and it's trying to make you laugh it's trying to be entertaining and there's some wacky stuff it it is completely out there in some of these stories but Man, does this movie feel like Halloween. Between the narrator talking over some of the visuals and between the stories and the different things that you see, and every story has to deal with Halloween or on Halloween, it's a good time. And it gets me in that Halloween spirit. Happy Halloween. Stop it! This movie may feel weird to some, but this movie takes place around Halloween on Halloween, not to mention the whole storyline with the mess and everything, the Silver Shamrock, yeah, it gets a little out there. It's 
a big idea in this movie, but with the score and the look of this movie and the creepy visuals and the songs, the music, the Happy Halloween song, you cannot go wrong with Halloween 3 around Halloween time. What would Halloween be without Hocus Pocus? <laughs> I mean, this movie is just oozing fall and Halloween. <laughs> you can taste the apple cider and you can smell the pumpkin spice everywhere. Well, you expanded it beautifully, Winnie, the way you started, started out with the adventure part and then you sort of slowly Explain went what? It's like a must watch. It is a must watch. I'm saying it right now. It's a must watch around Halloween time. There was something so simple about Portergeist. Watching this movie, we all had a point where we felt like the daughter, where we're just like, what's happening? What's happening? Portergeist is just such a great supernatural haunted house story. I'm going with the original one with Ryan Reynolds isn't bad. This one, there's something about this original movie. And it's just, it creeped me out as a kid. The house has a character to it. The windows look like eyes. It's just, this is a creepy movie. I'm a big fan of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. I love some of the movies. I don't love all of them, but this one, the original, you cannot go wrong with. It's just, it's a classic, it's a staple, and it's creepy. It's scary. I haunt your dreams. I mean, you can't really control that. That's it's terrifying. What else is there to say about The Shining? I mean, it's just, it's a classic. And not just a classic, it's top tier classic. Top notch psychological horror, top notch isolation horror. I mean, you got Stanley Kubrick. Enough said. Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall. There's some unsettling imagery and unsettling visuals in this movie. Those little girls creep me out. Creep me out. This movie is just like a slow descent into madness. And perfect for this time of year. Good times. Ugh. This movie, if you want to get scared, which who doesn't around Halloween, you watch this movie and then be prepared to not sleep for the next couple of days. I don't care how many times you see it. I've seen it so many times and every time I watch it, I still get creeped out. It still freaks me out to this day. I still see those little things behind in the black and the shadows and the f out of my face with this shit. Seriously. I mean, phew. Done. Let's get to the honorable mentions real quick. The Descent doesn't really have anything to do with Halloween or fall, but it's so good. I love The Descent. The Guest, it takes place around Halloween, so you kind of get a little bit of that Halloween fall atmosphere, but it's not too much, but it's just enough. It Follows is so good, such a good movie, but there's nothing really about it that says fall or Halloween, really. You can easily watch It Follows in October or near Halloween, and if that's your cup of tea, then that's your cup of tea, because it's good. Any universal classic monster movie. Can't go wrong with the old school classics. And to some people, this was their childhood. So, I mean, can't go wrong with it. This movie feels like you're setting up a haunted house attraction with your friends in a real haunted house. The chemistry between the characters are just so good. You feel like they're your friends, like you're just gonna go have a beer with them later. And then at some point in the movie, you then actually go through the house. It's like you're going through the haunted house as like a spectator. You get the best of both worlds. And then also you get the typical haunted house type of like movie. It's like three movies in one. It's a must watch for me. And if it's not for you, that's fine. But for me, it's a must watch. <laughs> Trick or treat. I absolutely love this. You cannot go wrong with this movie. Talk about a Halloween movie. This movie 
is like the almost the epitome of Halloween. It's an anthology movie, another anthology movie, but it just feels it's like on hocus pocus level of how much it feels like Halloween. It's it's funny. It's scary. It's entertaining. It's fun to watch. It's well shot. It's well acted. Trick or treat is just a treat to watch. See what I did there? And finally, number one. Let's try and figure out by process of elimination what movie this is going to be. Can you guess? <laughs> hey, I don't care how many times I see this movie. I've probably watched it so many damn times. I don't care. This movie will come on TV and that music would play every time there would be a haunted house attraction that I would go to as a kid or I would help set up one. Trick or treaters come to the house and whatnot and you would play creepy music and everybody would get in the mood and you always had the Halloween theme. Now, do some other movies in this list have more of a fall Halloween atmosphere? Yes. Hey, there are some other Halloween movies that have more of a Halloween mood and atmosphere than the original John Carpenter's Halloween. Halloween 4 and Halloween 6 are perfect examples of that. But guess who doesn't care? This guy. I'm sorry, I have no fox left to give. I have no fox here. Because none of those movies are as good as John Carpenter's Halloween. None of them. And by the way, when I do a double feature, I'm going Halloween, then Halloween 2018. I know people are going to go, oh, oh, how dare you? But if you like Halloween 2, if you like that movie and it's a double feature, then go ahead. Um, that's what you should, that's your. That's what you want to do. I'm, I support you in your decision and I support you wholeheartedly. That's your thing. That's You like that. This is, this is what I'm going to do. You know, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to enjoy it. So you do you, boo-boo, all right? Okay. Okay, that was my list. That was 31 movies to watch for Halloween this year, next year, whatever, or if they come out with better movies down the line and, and I can just swap them out. If you have any movies that you watch on Halloween, what are like the staples? Like Alien, The Thing, because I love The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing is one of my favorite horror movies. Alien is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. I just, I don't really go to watch them this time of year, but they probably are staples for other people. So comment down below your list, or if you just don't have a list, if you just have one or two or three or five movies that you watch around Halloween. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on social media for all channel updates in the in-between time. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Happy Halloween, y'all. Thank you, Selena. Take it away.